Amen, amen. Welcome to Mount Zion. We are glad that you're here. How about you get on your feet and give God praise if you're happy to be in the house of God? Come on, give God praise all around here. Well, amen. God bless you this morning. It's good to see each and every one of you. Thanks to everyone. And good to see you also in our parking lot, all our parking lot praisers that are out there. Uh, I believe that God has a word for you today in the house. Well, amen. Well, I want to encourage you. How many of you know that there is power in your praise? There is power in your praise. You know, scripture tells us this. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. When we think about magnifying God, did you know that magnifying God, it doesn't change anything about God. When we magnify him, it doesn't change anything about God. But when we magnify God, what that does is that changes the way you see God in your life. And you see what it does is magnifying God makes God bigger in your life. How many know that's a good thing? And sometimes in life we can magnify circumstances. We can magnify problems. And what we're doing is we're magnifying the wrong thing. But today in the house of God, today in this place, at this moment, We've come here to magnify the name of God. How many are with me today? I said, how many are come here to magnify God? And when you magnify God and you make him big in your life, you don't have to worry about your problems. You don't have to worry about your circumstances. You don't have to worry about the things you may go, you may face in life. Because our God is bigger than all of that. How many of you know? How many of you believe that this morning? Well, amen. Let's go to God let's go to him in prayer today if you could just lift up your hands all around the sanctuary today father god we thank you lord for all the faithful people that are here today lord we thank you for this moment lord that we have with you father lord we are not going to let it go to pass lord by thinking about other things external things lord problems circumstances but lord on this moment lord We've come to magnify your name and lift you up, Father, Lord, and make you big in our lives, Lord, because you're a great God. You're a loving God, Lord. So we've come, Lord, in this moment to magnify your name. Be with us on this day, Lord. We want to hear a life-changing word from you, Lord. Be with the faithful people. Send a blessing, Lord, a word of encouragement into their life, Lord. Speak life into us, Lord. Speak victory over the people, Father, today, Father. And Lord, we are going to lift up your name, we're going to praise you, and we are going to magnify you, Father, on this day. We pray all these things and we pray it in your precious name. Let all the faithful people of God shout amen and give God praise all around the sanctuary as our praise team leads us.
deliver me Cause all I seem to do is hurt me I hurt me Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord Please deliver me Cause all I seem to do is The same old things The same old traps And I hurt me
really thankful to God, why don't you just stand on your feet and give him a great big play, praise. If you're in your car right now, why don't you join the church on the inside and give God some praise in your car and tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Been better to me than I've been to myself. Watched over me all night long. I just want to say, this is my in a word of thanks to God even again those in the car quiet your children quiet your conversation whatever you were saying you'll have a moment to just go in silence and bow your heads and close your eyes focus in on what God has done for you people like you are people of ethics and etiquette Etiquette says that when someone has done something nice for you, you return back to them and say thank you. And God knows the Lord has been good to you this week. Kept you in your right mind and kept you from a diseased body. You ought to tell him thank you. You still have food on your table and last night you still had a bed to sleep in. You had a roof over your head and your family woke up and nobody died last night and so you ought to say thank you Lord still you were able to get up and put your clothes on and come to the church and uh, come here to praise God and you ought to tell him the choir said this is your this is your this is my exodus and I'm ready to move from where I was to where I need to be I'm ready to go in another direction. I'm, I'm leaving the, my old ways. I'm leaving those old sins. I'm leaving the negativism around me. I'm leaving the bad report and I'm going to exit out of that kind of thinking and I'm going to enter into the paradise and praise of God. Because the old folk used to say when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Have I got a witness? The choir said I'm, I'm exiting out of this. This is my exodus. This is my new chance. I'm, I've got a fresh start today. But I like it when I say this is not only my exodus, but in all of my thinking, when God has been good to me, I want to say this is my answer. And I want to say thank you, Lord. One more time, choir. This is this is my This is my answer, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Now, as you're standing and as you're sitting with your head bowed praying, I want you to pray for those in Indianapolis. A man lost his mind, went into the FedEx area, got out with a machine gun, if you will, and automatically just started taking people down. It had nothing to do with his qualm or quarrel. Right now, people are devastated in Indianapolis, crying in grief, bereaved because somebody is not coming home today. Somebody is not coming out of the hospital today. Somebody is afraid that what happened has traumatized them in their work environment. And while you're praying, pray for those in Minneapolis and those in Minnesota, those who are struggling still through the George Lloyd situation and terrible event. And pray for those who are struggling there in that area in Dante Wright death. Then there's still people still in Louisville still crying over the sister who died. And 
incidents that are occurring all over the country. And the truth of the matter is that our minds are confused today. Everybody seems to be confused. Police seem to be confused. Victims seem to be confused. And it seems like we've got confusion everywhere. And so now we need to beseech the God who deals with confusion. And he can straighten out relationship between black and white and white and brown and black and brown and all of that kind of a stuff. Only God can do it. But the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I can make shifts and changes in the country. I can rid pandemic. I can handle financial problems. I can deal with upset marriages. I can handle children that are being disobedient. I can deal with school systems that won't open up and straighten out your world. Oh, eternal God, our Father, we thank you right now for this moment and this time. Bless us now, God. Help us with the confusion that we are facing. God, we know that when our house is on fire, it's not time to fight each other, but it's time to go get the water hose and the water buckets and put the fires out so that we can handle the bigger problem, with this, which is our relationship with you. I thank you, God, for people inside this church. I thank you, God, for people who are sitting in their cars. I thank you, God, for people who are looking at us on Facebook and those who are looking at us on YouTube. And I'm believing right now that you're going to give us peace in the midst of our valley. In the name of Jesus, I pray for his sake. And all the people of God shout it, amen. Give God a great big hand praise. As you go to your seat, I was going to tell you to go around and hug each other, but I think that's a little too early and too premature. Amen. I'm glad to see all of y'all today. We're going to ask our technician to put on the, uh, the uh, our announcements for today, and we're going to continue in a marvelous worship experience. I feel so at home seeing all y'all today. How many of y'all invited somebody to your church? Let me see your hands. That is just terrible. You need to invite somebody to church. You say, well, Reverend, I don't want nobody else to come. Well, when it gets more than what we have about right now, we have an overflow next door. And so people can sit in the overflow, our, our former fine arts center uh, area. It's a beautiful area, and they can see it on, on the uh, screen. And then there's plenty of parking spaces outside for people to be outside. Now, if you don't want people to come into your service, why don't you invite them to the other service? And tell them you come at 8.30, and I'll come at 11. How's that? Does that make you feel any better? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel no less better with any of that. But you need to invite people to church. You want things to change in your community, in your neighborhood, and around you. Invite some folk to come in here and worship God and pray and praise God. Amen? Amen. So outdoor people, I'm talking to you too. There's plenty of room out there. We're getting ready to open it up for you. You can sit outside and you'll be on the hill like the people were in the first century. When Jesus started preaching, he preached on the hillside. And so you can be on the mountainside and the hillside pretty soon outside. So we got plenty of room for everybody. Amen. And we're going to always make sure you're safe. Because when you're not safe, I'm not safe. And I hate to tell you this here, but I'm concerned about myself. So I want to make sure all of us are safe. Amen. God bless you. Come on, Tech. Hello, Mount Zion friends. I'm excited to give you some updates from the church, what we believe, what we are working on together, and where we want to go. You know, a year ago, we started sending you videos to update you on how we are moving forward during the pandemic, and we have stayed on the move for Christ. Through it all, God is still good and he still sits on the throne and we have always been open for worship and ready to serve. Many people have asked, are we still doing weddings and funerals? And the answer is yes, we are. We have made adjustments to make them safe. For a moment, we will limit numbers and spread people out. But for those sacrifices, there is nothing more important than to be able to consummate marriage or celebrate the life of a loved one in your church. We have a large facility which allows us to be safely distanced. During this time, it's important for everyone to serve. That's why you see us serving seniors and people who need food. Due to the pandemic, 42 million people may face hunger. 13 million of those are children. 
We need to serve. That's been our aim since the beginning and we are continuing throughout this time and we are seeing people in our community do better due to what we have been offering them. What else are we doing? Through our prayer room and our prayer garden, we are making safe spaces for people to connect with God and also a place to remember those we have lost in a unique way. Remember, we thank God for the lives of those we lost and we remember the moments that we had to share together. So we will be providing a way for you to receive memorial stones in our prayer garden for your family and we ask that you would support this and be a part of it. Here at Mount Zion, we are advocates of health and safety. We have partnered with doctors to give us answers to the biggest questions during this time. We are also advocates of the COVID-19 vaccine. While not trying to put down anyone who isn't ready to take it yet, we want to make it available to those who would like to be protected. So we have recently formed partnerships in having our own vaccine days for Mount Zion at the Wolstein Center with FEMA and also University Hospitals where they have given us locations just for people who are affiliated with our ministry. We still believe in social distancing and masks, but we believe that we can safely gather if we follow the right instructions. Our main goal is always to share the message of Jesus Christ to the world in conventional and unconventional ways. So now we have to invest in technology. We have to invest in the newest and most innovative ways to grow our ministry. Lastly, we are still in this thing together. If you need us, we are here. And when we need you, we know that you will be there too. I believe, and as my father has coined in our vision, we are rebounding together. God bless you, God loves you, and we love you too. Amen. Let's give God some praise for that wonderful message. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. As we all, again, stand at the attention of God and turn our Bibles to Malachi 3, 6 through 12. And we're preparing for our tithing time and also our offering time. And I just always ask the question, if there's anyone who's blessed from the Lord, can you just say amen? There's so many witnesses here in the audience of God's blessing when you give back to him. The Bible says this, and we're going to read it responsibly. It says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, thinking on God, thanking God for all that he's done for us. Know today as we tithe, as we give our offering, today is also a day to focus on the good things that God has done. Focus on the good things God has done on your life, and if you can't, Think of a good thing. Maybe you had a bad week. Maybe you've had a bad month or even a bad year. Just think about the fact that you're alive today. Just think about the fact that you're not in a hospital today. Maybe you're here in the church. Somebody needs to say, thank you, Jesus. We're thankful for these moments. Thankful that you're in the parking lot. Thankful that you're even watching us online. So this is a moment as we give today. We don't give grudgingly. We give cheerfully because God has been good in our past. But also we give because we know that God can do some things in our future. You know, as we talk about tithing, and my parents taught me this at a very young age. When we tithe, when we give, it's not just about yesterday or today. It's about tomorrow. It's about sowing this seed of expectation, sowing a seed of faith in knowing that God is going to bless your future and God is going to open up some things if you just have faith through your giving. There's witnesses here today of faith through giving, through the tithe 
end the offering today. Let us bow our heads and talk to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for every giver here. We thank you for every giver watching us and every giver in the lot today. We pray, God, for a special added blessing in their life because of their faithfulness to you. We believe that when we give back what already belongs to you and we bless your kingdom and your ministry work, we believe that all that we have going on in our own lives are going to move further than if we have kept everything to ourselves. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do for all of us here today. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said amen and amen. I'm going to ask right now if you're a tither, you can come down or if you're giving an offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets and out in the lot, the ushers are going to come out right now and they'll be collecting the tithe and offering. And if you're online, go to mcov.org. happy to be in service today just wave your hands and honk your horns if you're in the lot it's so good to have you so good to even see your face even though I know it's behind a mask I know somebody out here is smiling if you have a Bible I'd love for you to turn it to the book of Psalms 43 as we go into the Word of God as we go into the teaching and the preaching of the Word of God if you have your Bible excuse me if you have your Bible yes you can go into Psalms Actually, I'm going to switch. Can you go to Isaiah? Not too far away. Go to Isaiah. Let's switch it up. Uh-oh. Isaiah. Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. Isaiah. Let's get to it. Isaiah chapter 43. And I'm just going to read the King James Version. And right after that, I'd like to read that text one more time in the message version, just to kind of gleam it to light a little easier for us. Isaiah 43. The Bible says this. It says, Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, 
you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. How many are happy to know that he's your Savior? But then when I go to the message version, another interpretation, interpretation from Eugene Peterson, it says this. It says, but now God's message, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place. Oh, somebody ought to just say hallelujah. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am God your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I don't know about you, but I found myself between a rock and a hard place sometime. And so he says, when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place, I am your personal God. You know, I've experienced being in a rock and a hard place not too long ago. I was on an early morning flight, I'll never forget trying to get home. Remember, anybody ever been on a flight trying to get home? And all of a sudden, I was on a 7 a.m. flight to Cleveland, heading home. And all of a sudden, at 7.15, they canceled my flight. And they told us that we had to go all the way back to the ticket counter where we got started to rebook our flight. Well, what people didn't know is, and I'm telling you, when they told us we had to rebook, people just started jetting because they knew it would be difficult to get rebooked. And, and what people didn't know is that there were no flights back home, back to Cleveland for the next three days. It was fully booked and there was no flights, again, heading back. And, and there was nothing out of Cleveland that didn't have all the passengers booked on a flight. But the question is, the thing that I remember is how I reacted. And, and, and I, didn't, I didn't give up hope. This is, this is what I did, if I can tell the story. The first thing I did was I prayed to God. And so I said, I said, Lord, I need to get home. I, I've got some things planned. I've, I've got some things that I need to do. And so I, I prayed to God and I said, Lord, if it be your will, help me to get through this. So first of all, I gave myself some time to think. So I didn't run like everybody else. I just stayed there sit, sitting, and I was a, a little frustrated, so I just calmed down a little bit. And, and, and I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to wait till all the doubters got out the room. And so all the people that were supposed to be on, on the canceled flight, they had left the area, and I, I waited for an hour in my seat. And, and, then, and then what I did was I, 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 I looked online, and all the flights were booked, and I, I called the airline, and nobody would answer the phone. And, and it had been one hour had passed, and, and after one hour, I looked behind me. And come to find out right behind where I was at the gate was another full flight to Cleveland. Of course, one hour after my flight was supposed to take off, this particular flight, another flight to the same place was leaving. So I went to the agent at the gate and I, I asked a question that I already knew, but I, I said I'd ask it anyway. I, I said, can you get me on the flight? And you know what she said? She looked at me with a smile and she said, no. And then while she did that. I asked her another question. I said, well, can you put me on standby? And she looked at me kindly and she said, yes. And then while putting me on standby, she was typing away, as you know they do at the airlines. And, and she said, wait a minute. She said, I think I may have a miracle for you. Because someone hasn't shown up and so I'm going to give you their seat. And boy, did I scream out at that airport, thank you, Jesus. I immediately prayed to God and I thanked him for his amazing favor. And what lesson I learned on that day is that when everyone else gave up, that's when God actually brought the miracle in my direction. Do I have a witness of how God can work in your situations? 
So you got to remember that when you're between a rock and a hard place, you should never give up hope. And see, that's the subject I want to talk about today. That's my sermon subject, the reason that you should never give up hope. The reason that you should never give up hope. You know, this week I was asked the question, why is it that you seem to be so hopeful all the time? And I thought about that question for a minute and I answered them and my answer was this. I said, I hope a lot. I, I expect for a desirable thing to happen, number one, because I know what God is capable of. And number two, if he's done it for somebody else, I believe that he can do it for me. And also, if he's done it before, I believe that God can do it again. Is there anybody that believes that God can do some good things in your life again? See, see, what I want you to know is that if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to give you a nugget that I don't want you to forget. I want you to remember this. If you, are, if you have a right relationship with Jesus Christ, you are under the kingdom authority. You are under what is called the kingdom authority. If you know Jesus, hope is a good thing because hope is a byproduct of faith. And if you can just have faith, impossible things can happen. If you have faith, there's no telling what can happen in your life. See, you should never lose hope, remember this, because our security and our safety and our, our health just doesn't rest in the products of this world. Think about it. And, and what it provides, our, our security, our, our health and our safety actually rests in the arms of the Lord. See, that's what being in the arms of the Lord is really all about. It really means, it really means no matter what is going on, you are under the kingdom authority. You're under the kingdom authority. And that's what Isaiah is talking about in our text for today. Through the prophet Isaiah in this text, God sent a word to his people. If I can give you some background, God was sending a word to his people. He sent a word to a people who were living in a radical poli political upheaval and radical change, somewhat like our days and our times. The world was constantly changing, and, and they didn't seem very safe right now. And, and Isaiah showed them. He showed them that even though your world changes around you, God's hand on your life never changes. Even though your world changes, God's hand on your life never changes. And see, what I want to do is I want to proclaim today that God has an unchanging hand that you can hold on to even right now. I want those that are hearing my voice today to realize that you can continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand. If you've got a job, if, if you've got some finances in your life, you're holding on to God's unchanging hand. If you, if you uh, still got family or still got some friends in your life or if you still got somebody in your life or somebody that you can call on the phone, if you've got at least one friend, then that's a sign that God's hand is over your life. Can somebody give God some praise that God's hand is over your life? So you're blessed. The truth is you are blessed. Somebody say blessed. You're blessed simply because you are here today. You're, you're blessed simply because you're watching us online today. You're, you're blessed, blessed simply because you drove here today if you're in the lot. You're not in the hospital right now. You're, you're not in the jailhouse right now. God's got a hand over your life. Now, now, I should stop right there. Somebody needs to, again, thank God that he's got his hand over your life. See, see, you see this in God's word. You see in God's word, there's, there's what we call a generational promise and a generational covering called, again, the kingdom agenda. The kingdom agenda. And even though we see things in life that we've never seen before and stability seems like a thing of the past, the prophet was teaching the people in the, in the text in Isaiah that just as God has delivered in the past, he can still deliver on today. Just as God has did it in the past, he can still deliver today because, because he was here from the beginning and he's going to be there right to the ending. And so the prevailing word for today is don't give up hope because God is going to take care of his own. God is going to take care of his own. 
And see, that's what I'm holding on to today. That's what I hold on to in these days and these times. And, and if I'm not letting go, if I can keep hold on to God, God is going to take care of his own. So, so it's my desire this morning to bring you to these principles that we can live confidently in challenging times. We can live confidently in challenging times. We can live in peace even when the world is all mixed up. Our world can be safe in an unsafe situation because there's assurances to those who have followed and those who have accepted Jesus Christ. And the assurance is, is that God will not let you go. God will not let you go. You know, one of the things I love to do, and I, I have a, a two-year-old daughter. She's going on three in a couple of weeks, and, and my baby girl, we call her London. She, she, she loves it when I bounce her up in the air, and so with a careful bounce, I love to swing her in my arms up in the air and, and then catch her, but recently, she's gotten a little bit bigger. And so I could tell by the look on her face that she's beginning to get scared that daddy is going to drop her. And the thing is, she's probably telling the truth. And the truth is, is that many of us in our lives have the same natural reaction at times. We feel like because of what we're experiencing in life, we, we feel like because of what's going on, because of the back and forth that we see and the up and the down that we see, the, the visual instability makes you feel like, like God has dropped you, that, uh, that because of what you've done or, or maybe what you've done in the past or because of some decisions that you've made that God may drop you and let you fall. But I want to give somebody some good news today. And that is God has a vested interest in your survival. See, God is not interested in seeing you fall. God wants to hold you up. God wants to hold you up. Isn't it good to know that God wants to hold you up? Think about this. If you've got food on your table, he's holding you up. If you've got clothing on your back, he's holding you up. If you've got money in the bank, he's holding you up. If you've got a job, if, if you've got retirement or some type of income in your life, God is holding you up right now. So we don't, need to, we don't need to go through life feeling like we've been dropped. Because in actuality, God is holding you up. And so the Bible says this. The Bible says this is what we are to do. In this text, it says do not fear. Do not fear. And that's not just a plea to drop your worry. That's a command from God. He's saying, do not fear. Drop the fear the enemy wants to put in you. We got to drop the fear that tries to creep in our minds every single week. There's so much stuff in the news. There's so much stuff that we hear on our job. There's so much stuff that we hear on our family that wants to put fear in our bodies. But we got to remember what God said. God said, do not fear. See, sometimes we just got to turn off the news and walk by faith. Sometimes we got to turn off the news and walk by faith. And remember, God has every single reason to hold us tight. He has every reason to forgive you, to, to redeem you, to protect you, and to bless you, and to hold you up. And, and somebody may be asking, why is that? Why does he have every reason to redeem me, to protect me, to hold me up? Why is God going to hold me up? Well, the truth is, he has every reason to keep watching over you. Because the protection of God is not because of your ability. See, the protection of God is, is not because of what you do or, or what you've done. But the protection of God is firmly linked to your identity. It's firmly linked to your identity. If I can characterize who you are in another way. There's a song the old choir used to sing. And the lyrics said this. It said, if anybody asks you who I am, it said, tell them I'm a what? I'm a child of God. See, that tells me, that song lyric, if you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you've got a kingdom identity. You've got a kingdom identity. You're the sons and daughters of a king. So no matter what is going on in this world, you don't have to worry about a thing. You can make it through things that the regular folk can't make it through because God will uphold you because the Bible says he has done what? He has redeemed us. 
It says he has redeemed us. See, I don't know about you, but I thank God for his power of redemption. I thank God from, for saving us from ourselves. I, I thank God for saving us from the sin that so easily can hold us down. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. See, Jesus paid the ransom for the bad things that we've done. And so since Jesus died on the cross for our sins on Calvary, it revealed our full value to heaven and to God. And so Jesus has invested much in you, so he's not going to sit back and watch the enemy destroy your life. See, the Bible says he knows every one of us by name. He knows us by name. He claimed you, so again, you don't have to worry about a thing. See, remember the word of God says this. It says, when thou passest through the waters. See, there's going to be some troubles when you pass through it. He's gonna, but, he, but at the end of the day, the Bible says he's going to give you victory over it. See, the Bible says what happens when you pass through the waters. It says, I will be with you. I don't know about you, but it's good to know that God is with me when I pass through some troubled times. So there's going to be some rough times. There, there's going to be some times when life is out of control and when you feel overwhelmed with more than you can handle when, and there's no form, foot, firm footing and no sense of security. But God says this, I am with you and I'm always going to provide a way through it. I'm always going to provide a way through it. Now, I don't know about you, but, but all this week, God has been providing a way through for me. Maybe it was the vaccine recently for you. Maybe it was the stimulus checks that are coming out to folk. Maybe there, there's something in your life. There's got to be something that you're seeing that shows you that God is still providing for your life. Maybe it was in your home. Maybe it was on your job. God is always providing a way through some crazy situations. And so I want to ask you the question, has God provided? Has God made a way for you in the last 30 days? If God has done maybe one or two things for you, can you just take a few seconds to give God a hand clap of praise? There's something that God has done in your life. So how do we keep our Christian hope up? We got to keep on walking in the ways of the Lord. We got to keep on looking out for our brothers and our sisters. We got to keep on being giving and generous people. We got to keep on serving the Lord because that's what good Christians do. That's what we do in good times and in bad times, in tough times and in scary times. No matter what state we find ourselves in, we got to keep our trust in the Lord. Because that's the thing that will carry us through. See, we don't ever need to give up hope because, again, we are the sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are King of Kings. We are sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, you know, as I close today, I want you to I want to end with a story. You know, one of the things that I love is cars. You know, if anybody knows me, I, my hobby was cars ever since I was a young child. I, I love model cars of all types. I used to put them together in all shapes and sizes. And I, I love going to the car show and looking at all the new cars and all the new technologies. And I, I study the ones that are safer than the other. Which one carries the most people and which one handles the road better? I, I travel a bit, so I'm, I'm big on having a safe and a good car for my family and I, I can tell you just about anything about cars. I remember my first car was an old Dodge Dynasty. It was old, it was used, it was beat up, but it was beautiful to me. I had to fix it every 10 days. But it was my first car, and, and I remember it had this messed up transmission, and, and I would, it would break down on me, and I, I'd be stranded on the road, and I, I vowed that whenever I, I grew up and I became a man, I'd always have a nice new car that was safe for me to drive. So as I grew older, one thing I learned about cars is that one of the best ways 
to identify how, how, how safe a car is, is how, and how reliable a car is, is about looking at the brand. It's about looking at the brand. See, the brand can tell you much about a car that you would have never known. And see, that taught me a great lesson. It taught me that you never know the quality of what something is until you know about the person who made it. And see, I want to tell you today, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you're of a special brand. I want to tell you, if you got Jesus in your life, you are of a special brand. You are loved. You are accepted. You're a child of God. You are redeemed. You are forgiven. You are free from condemnation. You are chosen. You are anointed today. You don't have to live with fear because God has not given you a spirit of fear. He's given you a spirit of love, of power, and of sound mind. You are chosen, even in times like this, to bear fruit. And never forget, whatever you need is available to you. So never neglect your brand. Never neglect who you are in Jesus Christ. Is there anybody here that will never neglect who you are in Jesus Christ? If anybody tells you who I am, tell them I'm a child of God. If you're a child of God today, I want you to stand with me and be a witness for Jesus and give God a hand clap of praise. You are of a special brand. So we're going to stick to our brand as Christians. We're going to stick to our brands as children of the Most High God. We're going to stick to our brands of living by faith. We're going to stick to our brand of living for Jesus. We're going to stick to our brand of living by grace, of living by mercy, of living by love, of living by generosity. We're going to stick to our brands. And what's the reason? That you should never give up hope because God loves you and God has invested his only son, Jesus Christ, for you. So ultimately what we know as a Christian and as a believer is that God is going to hold you up. And I want to ask you the question, has God been holding you up? Come on. Has God been holding you up? Listen, you're here with me. Bow your heads with me. Even in your car, bow your head. You know, I was just reading a story. The oldest woman in America is an African-American, beautiful woman. And she was 116 years old. And she just passed away on yesterday. I believe her name was Hester Ford. We thank God for this beautiful woman. And question was, oh yeah, give her a great big hand clap, this beautiful black woman, oldest woman in America, just passed away on yesterday, 116 years old. The question was asked of her, I always love to get the wisdom from someone older than myself. One thing about this wisdom, they asked her in troublesome times and tough times, how did you make it through? She said, when I went through injustices in life, when I saw all the wars, when I lived through segregation, she said, I never gave up hope. And I always kept my faith in Jesus Christ. And I kept on moving. Will you believe it today? She kept her faith in Jesus Christ. And she kept on moving. I just want to pray with you today. There's somebody in this place. Maybe you haven't accepted Jesus in your life. Maybe you're here today and you need special prayer. Maybe you're here today. You need to be baptized. You need to make sure that you've immersed yourself in water to show the symbolism of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want to let you know, even if you're watching online, that Jesus wants to save you today. We don't want anybody to feel like God is not holding them up through times like these. We don't want anybody to feel hopeless. And I want to tell you, Jesus is hope to the hopeless. There's many witnesses here today that have been through so many mountains and so many valleys of how Jesus brought hope into their life today. So I want to tell you, I want to challenge you to accept Christ into your life. If you're in the audience with me, there's a card in the pew or there's also a card in the foyer. I want you to fill that out and we want to talk to you more. 
about following Jesus and accepting him into your life. Or if you want to go on your phone, go to mcov.org and we want to express to you and show you what the next steps are when it comes to accepting Christ into your life today. And even if you need special prayer or you need some help, fill out the card or go online to mcov.org and we'll get back to you. And we want to help you through today. Let's bow our heads and talk to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our worship today. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory today. And we just pray, God, that at the end of the day, that you would just continue to show us in many ways how you're holding us up. And if there was somebody here today that wanted to fill out that card, know today that you can take it to the receptacles right at the door. And there will, you can drop them off right there and we'll get right back to you. But let's go. Heavenly Father, we love you. We lift you up. We magnify you. Thank you for our worship today. Thank you for the preach word. And thank you for giving us hope in a hopeless world. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Can somebody give God some praise today? And you can consider yourselves dismissed. We will see you on next week. Remember to reach us out from the back to the front. And if you're with us in the parking lot, God bless you. And online, we'll see you on next week.